Paul, we're back with you. Where are we? What is going on? And how's me 310 are doing? <laughs> Hi Gart, yeah, you're back with us again. I guess really and truly we should have been maybe in Paris uh, this week. I know that sounds exotic, but the machines that we have here were destined to be launched at the SEMA show. Yes. So instead, what Pottinger have done is decided to send them to the markets and let each uh, market launch them themselves. So that's why we have you here today. We're doing a launch via social media and yourselves to get to uh, show these machines to the public. Well, it's been something, Paul, that's very noticeable because we were down with you a few weeks ago when you were, and I'm going to use the words, trying to get a roadshow up and running, but COVID-19 decided <laughs> to have its own issues there. And I suppose this is a bit of a follow-on because the phone call came to me saying, here, Gareth, there's something else happening. Can we maybe hold on to the 310R for a few weeks? So what are you launching? Because certainly Pottinger and Ireland are putting a lot of weight behind the tillage side of the business at the minute, and that's what this is about. Absolutely, and there was always a strong tillage scene within Pottinger, but maybe not pushed in Ireland as much. And these two machines, I guess, are a sum of that. This is a front hopper and combi unit, and this is the latest generation of that. Likewise here, this is a trail cultivator. We always made it as a synchro, but this one is designed to be trailed from the start. So they both have unique features. And yes, we are pushing both these, uh, these tillage machines today, but you'll see next spring and uh, next May, we will have a lot of uh, grass equipment, some interesting gear coming as well that will test your 310R. We have a grass equipment that will test that lady next year. I guess it's difficult to get out there now uh, to promote these machines and to be seen. So we are trying with social media. Yes. At the end of the day, everything is done through our dealers. So while everyone sees me a bit, we rely solely on our dealers to sell uh, the machine. And, and they're the important link in all this. And we tend to maybe forget that in the videos a little bit. I do understand what you're saying, but at the end of the day, we're in a situation now where there's not a lot of opportunity at this time of the year to get these machines out around all your dealers. I mean, the effort was there to do that with the previous videos. So now that we're basically going by the weather forecast, we've been granted about half a day's grace here <laughs> to try and showcase and, and watch. And rather than sitting down at HQ in a nice big office with a shiny new machine, you have done what I would say the right thing is you've got them on to your Finty at 2.8 and the 310R, and you have them out in the field, which I think is the right way to do it. Talk us round these machines. What makes these different, and why is Pottinger now a big player in the tillage world and should be considered in Ireland? That's what you're here to do, so you do it. Yeah, well, I guess <laughs> if we start maybe with the cultivator, and I guess why people are interested in this machine now is to get away from ploughing. Um, ploughing is slow and tedious, and it uh, costs a lot of money and everyone likes doing it for a while, but in the end, we're all looking for ways out of it. So that's what this machine is. It's not maybe min-till, people call min-till, but actually there's a lot of tilling going on in this. You'll see in the video, it's moving a lot of soil. The legs are curved, so that it's rolling it forward and sending it left and right, so a big mixing effect. And that's the idea of this machine, just to replace the plow. And then, it's up to the customer or the situation what drill is following it. In the right conditions, it can be a trail drill for big output, but in a lot of situations, it's what we call the combi unit. But unique on this machine, and what really makes it work for Ireland, is on the headstock, it's got traction control, which is not required with your 310R, let me tell you. But that's not the tractor that's predominantly going to be on a machine like that. It's going to be a little smaller, maybe, you know, 250, 220 horsepower and there the issue will be traction but on the headstock of this we have a traction control system that puts the the pull on the back end of the tractor that makes it work for that range of tractors so it's really opening up the full spectrum of market for us with that system about this machine in hmm. particular what is it and how do we understand the numbers paul because i know pottinger from visiting the factory a couple of years ago I know the numbers are all very methodical and they have their, their different meanings. So, like for instance, I know four yeah. means four meter. Yes. So can you, exactly. can you explain the rest of it for Paria me? Paria is the make and 40 is four meters and 30 means three rows. So what this has is three rows of tines. So there's 13 tines. This goes up to 40, 50, 60 and 70. So up to seven meters in, in working width. 
And if you look, what makes it really usable for Ireland too is the transport wheels are integrated within the working of the legs, so it's not separated, it doesn't get too long because we have smaller fields and we like to keep a tight headland maybe with smaller sprayers and we like to work outside the tram line, the headland tram line, that you're not leaving ins and outs on the tram line and causing the sprayer to bounce around. So we need to make tight maneuvers and we have the transport wheels well integrated into the chassis to allow that. Is this your depth wheel at the front here? Absolutely, and that's the joy of this machine. It's so easy to set. So your depth is governed by the depth wheel at the front and the pack ring roller or whatever roller you have at the back. And you let the whole machine down and it sits on the depth wheel at the front and the, and the roller at the back and as simple as that. And if you want to go deeper, both of those come up together on a spool and it's on a sign on the front gives the indication about how deep you're running. Like you have this machine set in, 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 in two minutes and then it's just go, you know, and that's the joy of it. And this particular model here obviously is folded. <laughs> yeah. So it's it, obviously if transport widths, there's no issue, you can fold it up and it seems to fold up quite neat. Absolutely, it folds up very neat and we have accumulator system on the transport wheel, so on the road it's taking that heavy shots out of it. Is there many changes from this to the previous model or? Yes, the previous model was designed as a mounted machine and then there was chassis and, and drawbar integrated and it works fine, whereas this is designed from scratch to be trailed. So it, it is very different uh, machine. And over here, over your left hand shoulder. Yeah, this is what I've been kind of saying to guys, this is back to the future because there's been lots of different drilling ideas and concepts this last couple of years, but the weather has called what can work or not. We see it here today, we see it last autumn, more people going back to yes, the combi unit. Very much so. You can say what you want, but to get this, the work done, that's all that's working today. What we see happening, people go with this machine, they go with their trail drill. If the trail drill doesn't work, they go with this machine and the combi. And if the, the, and if the cultivator doesn't work, they go with the plough. And you can plough a nice fresh bit up today, turn it over dry and, and get sewing. Whereas some of these other systems, it's just not working. It's a, it's a wee bit like if and out, get the combi out. Absolutely. <laughs> well, what about this particular combi unit? What makes it so special? Because you were saying it's it's pretty much, it's a new release product as well. Absolutely, so from the very front to the very back, total new product, including the power harrow. That's really nice, unique feature actually on the bed of the harrow is the folding mechanism. So it keeps the harrow very tidy to the tractor, which is always a benefit, even if you're not using a drill, but especially with a drill, you're keeping all the weight closer to the tractor. The adjustability is all done from the side. So to adjust your depth, you pull out a pin here and you have a sliding rail. Very easy done. Same for your leveling board. You carry a spanner, it sits on the side and you can adjust your leveling board by turning this, this hexagon here. So you're not climbing in, trying to lift up the board and it gets wedged and you're fighting and it's wet and, you know, and it's dangerous. Then you come to your seed depth, adjust it here as well. So it's really usable. But all those features can be specced hydraulically as well if you require from the cab. So the usability of the machine is really, really nice. We have uh, the Coulter system, which is known to us now for, I think, four years. Double disc system. Really nice for Irish conditions because how it handles the sticky conditions, the tough conditions that we get when these machines have to come out. So what I mean by that is the bearing is integrated behind the disc. So we're not catching up and building up material here that it's nice streamlined behind it. We have a nice row spacing between, between the front and back. So we're getting a lot of clearance in between the discs. This one is actually seed and fertilizer. So it has the ability to sow seed and fertilizer in one go. So it's a pressurized tank because of that. And actually this machine will be offered in a lot wider working widths, up to seven meters. For that, you need to be able to get volume down the spout. So that's why it's a pressurized tank. 
The head is the same head as on our normal air stem, the IDS head, and what's really nice about this is people, when they see a four meter machine, they might instantly be put off because it mightn't do the tram line that they want. Maybe they're a contractor and they're doing 15 meters, they're doing 18, they're doing 21. Yeah. With that head, it does them all. So that is really, really a nice option for a contractor. So no matter what your tram line is, it knows which ones to knock out. And it's so easy. You just set in your sprayer within the cab and she does the rest. You still need to have a head on you because maybe that might mean for certain tram lines you're putting one in going up the field and one coming back. But generally the guys using this sort of equipment are all fit for that. Yeah. <laughs> you just need to know exactly what you're doing. Absolutely. Well, would you see four meter as the way forward, you know, an all-round home, and, and I'm heading up to the north here, it's still very much three metre, mm -hmm. but I suppose maybe this part of the world, there's a lot more fours and fives and sixes, or? Absolutely, and I think four metres is probably a good, a good working width for a lot of the size tractors, even in the north, you have a lot of, you know, 250 horsepower tractors that would handle this machine very easily. I guess it's nicer to be able to slow down a kilometre or two and do good work rather than trying to rush with a three metre machine and drive on. You're getting a high quality of work with more output with a wider machine. I suppose I'm going to have to ask or Olivia will fall out with me. How are you getting on with the Fent 828 as well? Yeah, look at, I mean, we like it. Everyone likes Fent, I guess, you know, because they are a quality machine. It suits us because it has high speed as well. It's 65K, we do a lot of road work. It's, it's a nice match for this. She's RTK, so we're only using the belt markers for show today. So no, it's, yeah, it's going well for us, to be honest, that tractor, yeah. I suppose I've, I've, I've one last question that I, I kind of wanted to ask you was, uh, who was that driving my 310R earlier? <laughs> I didn't think you might have saw that with the black windows. No, I was looking into the front window. <laughs> oh, no, we've a, we've a new member to the team and yeah, a great man, I have to say, James Buckley. He's going to support our dealers in the service end and the training and product promotion. And it's a pleasure to have him on board, a wealth of experience from a previous role. And this is all about giving our dealers the support to support the customers. And we have a Pottinger Ireland, which is, you know, we are the factory. We are not an importer. and. Pottinger are putting more and more people on the ground to help the farmer in the end, you know, and uh, yeah, we're delighted to have James. That's good, and it says nice to see him here. Just, you know, he better be careful with my tractor now. <laughs> he could, <laughs> we might have to interview him. <laughs> <laughs> but um, how's the 310 doing? Yeah, look, it's, we were delighted to have it when this arrived because when you want to show these products, you need to show them in the right way, and you need the right tractor for that. And, yeah, maybe it's slightly overkill, but you knew that when you were going to do a demo, you had the right machine. We didn't get as much done as we wanted to with, with the COVID thing, but the tractor has been flawless. Even here today, she's set up, she's turning herself on the headland, so no one is touching anything. If you could put a weight on the seat and get out, she'd have the field done for you maybe. So, <laughs> and you know, it's the future, I guess, but it was very easily done and, and, and it's nice just to sit back and, and use that. Well, look, Paul, thank you. Hopefully these new machines you're launching go very well for you. Hopefully we're in a better situation next year where we can get out about and get to a few shows and meet people. But until then, we'll just keep her going the best way we can.